Well, hey guys, this is a bit in, uh, different than normal. Uh, normally Saturdays is Rome 2, but we were having a stream with Joe and I decided this was a fun enough battle in uh, Thrones of Britannia that I wanted to show it off, because too many times the fights aren't too good. This was the best one in the stream and I wanted to air it. But uh, we actually have a 3v3 here. And during the video, <laughs> I definitely don't drink the last of the mead that I have. Nah, I do. And that's another reason why I chose this one, you know. Finish off the mead with a battle with Vikings. But let's get started here. Defense, we have three players. The first of which is the Norse with the Nordis. Now he's got the Hearthguard General. Two Yams Vikings, which I believe so I do want to show off, as they are probably the coolest looking unit in his roster. Look at those boys. Uh, three Axe Freeman. He also has three Long Axemen, two Viking Chosen Warriors, a Viking Archer, two Armored Archers, and a Catapult. Next is Mead, the Irish, with Joe on it. Now he's got the Household Rider General, which I'll show off in a second. Uh, one Kern Spearman, two Spear Warriors, one Eric Warband, which is what uh, my second favorite unit for them. Two Armored Guards, four Axe Warriors, two Freeman Archers, one Trained Archer, a Catapult, and my favorite unit, I believe is hiding right here, the, yes, the Gallo Glass. Show this boy off. Look at those boys. Really just a Huskar, but they're a lot of fun. <laughs> Finally, the best faction and the best player in this game, uh, Dyflund with me. Uh, <laughs> Royal Huskarl General, Royal Huskars with 240 men is scary. <laughs> An Eastman Spearman, three long axes, four Eastman Axe Warriors, four Eastman Hunters, two Eastman Mailed Horsemen, which we'll see in a second, and two Berserkers. Which I believe are, yep, hiding right here, 120 out of the normal 160. Look at those badasses. On the attackers, we've got... Facing off against uh, Dyflin, the other Sea King, Sundir. The heirs of Ivor the Boneless coming after each other. Real fun stuff. <laughs> With the Hearthguard General, which he actually gold chevroned up, because he's a monster. Uh, five Eastman Champion. Two Norse male to seer, two Eastman herdmen, one Eastman axeman, and four Eastman hunters. And his general, which is hard to see all of his boys because most of them are hidden. Does he have anyone who's not hidden? His catapult. <laughs> Everyone else is hiding. Next up, we have North Umbri. Played by Dade. I should mention Sundir is played by Smarthawk. Northumbria is played by Dade 2330. The Warlord's compa with a Warlord's Companion General, one uh, Seerol Spearman, one Sword Horseman, three Sword Seer, three Yarnos Chosen uh, Swordsmen, which are awesome looking units, four Danelaw Heavy Axes, four Danelaw Archers. One Yarl's Horseman and one Catapult. Do we have by any chance? Or are they all hidden? They are. No, those are the archers. Where are these boys? They are hiding as well. But the only <laughs> One of the two non-Viking factions in this matchup is the Normans, played by Reezy46911. He is a Norman Huskarl General, eight Norman Chosen Warriors, four Flemish Crossbows, one Catapult, and two Norman Elite Infantry, which are definitely the coolest. Where are they? Flemish, Flemish. Right back here. Also hiding. 
The one cool thing I love about Normans compared to the other factions is these kite shields that they've got. Look at these kite shields. But I mentioned that uh, we would be seeing the household rider and some Yar Eastern mailed horsemen in a second. They are right over here. Uh, two main ways into the settlement, three in total, one's from this beach right here, which is a death trap. One is over here, which is a death trap. And one's over there, which is really easy, but leads into a death trap. Uh, but, which you'll see, but unbeknownst to us and unbeknownst to them, we have some units over here. He has a Serial Spearman and Yarl's Horseman, which I don't see. They don't see our three. That This is where actually the battle will start off. But, let's get started. Oh, we're getting this fight on on the road. Make them pay! But, first part of this battle, artillery is going to be opening up with their super accurate artillery. My eastern mailed horsemen start marching out. Unbeknownst to me, they got two boys over there while well, this artillery fire is going off, breaking everything. That's gone. That's getting ready to go. He started in the spear warriors with his. Oh, I care what this artillery is, man. <laughs> they all hit. At least they wasted an extra volley. Yeah, just marching on down. Well, you know, these guys have 60 men in them. The general unit has 100 men in the household riders. 100 men of elite melee calf tier 3. But as I settle into here... These guys actually managed to stay hidden, which was really fucking annoying. That's for sure. <laughs> these guys notice, so they move up as these guys get hidden. Now they're invisible, but they notice them come in. So they're gonna just march up. Where did they come from? The enemy approaches! And we see everything, so I see that. Tried to get away. <laughs> it didn't work out too well. So I get stuck into the Yardle's Horsemen. At this point, I'm with the, uh, what is it? The, uh, Serial Spearman coming in. Joe's moving out to flank them from behind. As such, I'm just going to lay them over there, mess around with them. As the Norman forces, the Flemish crossbows move up. Following them, the Chosen Warriors. This is a very hefty lineup to fight. Northumbria and the Normans are brutal factions. Probably one of the stronger Danelaw factions with Northumbria. And the Normans <laughs> are so strong you can't even play them. They're meant to be literally your endgame boss to fight. So they are decked with armor. And are very dangerous. The last faction. Uh, Sundier are one of the Vikings, very similar to me, uh, Diflin, which are the Sea Kings. Let's get back over here to see the fun part. With him being announced, he's fleeing, knowing he can't win the fight, as he was winning that fight initially. So I'm going to jump on in with Joe coming in behind. We're letting this cavalry live, basically. And in return, we're killing a unit of spears. Tier 1 spears, but still very dangerous to our cavalry that needs to be taken out. Look how fast that number is dropping. So then it's not my guys doing it. Yeah, because that's what did this really to one of my spearmen. Knocked it down to 25 was the fight against the spears. So they'll get the revenge. The as that goes. Chosen there warriors. There. My strategy was basically 
I'm not going past here. This guy's sticking back for a little bit, but he'll move up. When I commit. Eastern Axe Warriors. Moving up. Yeah. Just hold in the middle of the flank. As my fun boys with long axes. Some hunters. There's my general hide of And my general. 240 man of Royal Huskar rolls. <laughs> because only Wisses use shields. <laughs> They're general. With this fully shattered, they're pulling away. They should be moving. The Arts Horseman is trying to cut us off. Which we do not see actually at this moment because it is hidden. So we're going to try to cut it off, take it out, and see what we can do against these forces. They're weaker units. Of course, we don't know what they've got. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Been discovered. I'm gonna flank around with these guys. He's gonna pull back. Normans are <laughs> running away, basically. Norman Huskaros. Ooh, we got some elite, some elite infantry along with the Chosens. Those guys. Wearing scale. <laughs> With this, Northumbria is to be getting their press up right down the middle. Sundir moves in. Sundir are going actually heavy swords. I normally don't go swords with these boys. Or any Viking boys. Maybe a few, like these Hesir, which are really scary. But yeah, with this, I'm going to get caught up taking on the sword Hesir and the Jarl's Horsemen. Give Joe a charge right into the back, as always. Very bad charge. As such, he's not going to stay in that fight. Pull out while I distract over here, letting myself get shot. Get shot, force them to waste some of their shots, and not pay attention to me while he pulls away. Basically sacrificing this calf. Though they did do well. Nearly 60 kills. And forcing them to use up a lot of ammo. And 65 kills. That getting sword of Joe's going to pull away. His general lives. Well, let's see if he gets 60. I don't think he is. No. See if he gets 70. <laughs> See how I do. 69, that's nice. But is he just nice or is he excellent with 70? I think he's just nice. He is just nice. With that, that artillery right now is so close to the wall because he's trying to take out that watchtower. Watch as he gets another volley in. Break that down. Eastman Axe Warriors, some Kern Spearmen right over here. Those tier 1 boys. As my spear band start heading on down. Those guys are ready for a fight, right guys? All armored up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, let's see if we got some really cool units for Mead that we can see up here. Got some of their Axe Warriors, which is pretty good. There we go. Jigurig. Yes, we're still waiting. Let's see if we can see the other fun unit for them. Is they're hiding some gallow glasses somewhere? Armored guards. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Just so you know, I do the first part of the video last, like a genius. So I actually don't know what the army build is. <laughs> yeah, 
I know. I'm wild that way. No, they won't, Berserkers. You will fight to the last. Ah, I knew he brought a Galagas. Those boys. Yep, I'm getting into position. I'm just going to push in a little bit more. And shield in. Buster in as they go into that shield's castle. That they look so cool in that formation, especially with those spears. Look at that. Hey, they're trying to general snipe me now. Poor bast those damn bastards. The Flemish, the Danelaw archers are starting their fire against my shield and spears. Already lost, losing a decent amount of men. Such I have to defend them. Luckily, most of that folly from the, I believe it's the crossbows, don't do much. Oh, is this unit of Danlaws? But now they're gonna pack off now that I start kicking their ass. <laughs> Josina is still hiding over there. Your all horsemen in the middle. Normans are moving their art Flemish crossbows up to try to challenge this corner. The issue is, is all these axe freemen are sitting here in that shield castle. Look at that. And they got struck. As this artillery starts firing into them. Hitting that unit of chosen. Yeah, moved my archers over to this flank to try to take them out. Get a volley against these guys. Just to see if I can silence them. But none of them really end up firing on that, so I back off. And the wall fight has begun. So we have, leading the way, Dane Law Heavy Axemen. Ooh. Some brutal boys. My Eastman Axe Warriors get ready to prep for them. As the battering ramp is being pushed up by the Chosens. Trying to hold these bastards back. So I get my unit of lung axes to come around and flank, because this is what these guys can do. Right up here, into these. And <laughs> taking one of their heads with me. Another one gets flipped over a shield. Drop it. But look at that number start to drop. As the next one preps to go in. Some arrow volleys in. Over here, Sundir is coming in. Uh, and we don't have much infantry over there to deal with it. Right now, we've got <laughs> some spear warriors, some axe warriors, and some chosen. Some current spearmen. So, those are my archers. This fight's going to just continue rotating.
Yeah, these Daylaw Heavy Axemen are strong, strong units. Especially compared to my Long Axes. Over here, we have the Eastman Champions dropping down with the current Spearman getting into defensive position. My archers go to pull away as these Axe Warriors move in. Over here, I have my Long Axes. Which I move away as they're not going to win that long <laughs> drawn out fight. Over here, these guys are still alternating between trying to break this unit so we can get into the next one. This, the batting ram, is gone, and my eastern spearmen are going to face the brunt. That was just friendly artillery just ripping into those current axemen. Ooh. Long Axe is wrapping around. Zerker's trying to get in for me. So I start dropping real fast against those Eastman champions. We're very, very tough units, so I'm going to just jump into the back of them. Continue to hammer and amble. We try to eliminate some of their range when we can. Over here, I'm getting this unit of champ warriors is getting surrounded. He's going to die real soon. Some long axes, some very depleted long axes are going in. And the issue we have. <laughs> oh, I need another bit of mead. Another issue we're having is these long axes are stuck in the back. And these just units are so good they're going to be winning. Over here, those Danelaw heavy axemen are finally dropping. As of these guys, so the long axes have got in here. But elite infantry is coming in. And ooh, look at those kite shields. They're going to take on everything we've got. Charging in. These guys should charge in now. They'll come and join this fight. Issue is, is they were the last units holding there, so these Danelaw Heavy Axemen can charge them in the back. I'm just trying to get kills right now. Yes. Ooh. All this, all this range right here. More Danelaw Heavy Axemen going, but Sword is here coming on in. The center fight. I mean, they're just getting melted. All they're do here to do is hold as long as possible and get some oil kills. So they'll have killed a lot in the oil. Zerkers are being targeted by the ranged. I would too, to be honest. They still got 106 kills. Joe's moved up now. He's got his options open. He's just waiting for his opportunity. The men have been routed. They are leaving the field. We have Anoris here. Prepping. Look at that number drop. I decided to dedicate some fire over to here to those boys who are attacking my berserkers. Long axes in. Having some of the fun units yet. Hearth Carter here. Here they are. Two scary units on this battlefield, the Yops Vikings. True elites of this battlefield. I got what remained of one of my axe warriors into the back of this. Do some dead more damage. They're almost at 100 kills. Who knows if they'll manage to get it, but I... Yep, there they go. They got it. The issue is, is this center's opening. The chosen warriors get in there. I'm getting ready with my royal hot scars. I'm just gonna... Which one am I gonna do? I think I charge into here first. Yeah, right into here. rack up a bunch of kills. Here, these Vikings are still trying to hold. They're at 183. 
guys are 57. Some more boys coming in to protect. Archers pull them back. Those armored guards right there. Joe making his move and taking out that catapult, even though they're out of ammo. It is a good thing to just eliminate a spotting unit. My guys go right into this middle. Pop their buff and just try to break as much as they can. But they get targeted pretty fast. Yep, here they go. They're starting to get hit. So I'm going to move them out. They're already at 100 kills with 30 with almost 40 losses. They end up with 40 losses out of there. These guys are still holding out right here on the back. More Eastman Axe Warriors winning. Ascaro's back into here. As I go to target these damn crossbows. Because honestly, this is the biggest threat to our... This fight right here. Though we don't have anyone here right now. This choke point... We can support with archers, but the only thing that's a real threat to this center are crossbows with their armor piercing. Pulling out. We're going to try to continue to eliminate those crossbows. There's still a... Look at that elite infantry, man. 225 kills. He's, he hasn't even lost 60 men left yet. Like, how? How do you handle this? They're terrifying, man. Axe Freeman coming in, they're just going to be more fodder for Chaos, but we're, we're literally just trying to hide this, hold this corner as hard as possible. Over here, we're winning this fight. 82 here. These guys are 211. We're just trying to hold this center. Or break this left flank so we can get more units to hold the flat center. As we're losing this center fight, but we are pushing away those ranged giving us some reprieve as we move into the Danelaw Arch Archers. This reprieve will hopefully get us some more men in the fight, as right now we have Spear Warriors, some Chosen, some Axe Freeman holding center. Long Axes are finally dropping. Red News are still holding. Joe's continuing his movement across. 90 men left. He's lost 10 men and he's gotten 107 kills. I mean, oh my gosh, these guys are still over 100. They haven't lost 60 men left and they're at 300 kills. That is absolutely terrifying. The hunters are going to try to zone these guys out and the berserkers are going to move in. Try to punch this gap in the middle. Continue to fight over there. Still having some Eastern Herdman back there. From the enemy. This is shameful. Yep, some of my men are dropping. That's that long axe unit, 71 kills. I realize this isn't going to be tenable very long, but I am going to send the Berserkers in to take this flank the armored guards flanking them from behind. We should be able to break that and then get back into the center. Yep, there I go. I'm out, but it's too late for one of my men. Those archers drop. Mead's the only one with some units really back here, but it's just his archers. He's got some gallo glass and a warband and a viking archer. He's also the only defender outside of the settlement, so I can't say much to Joe. He might be the only one with those units far back, but he's the only one over here. And right now, all these ranged are open. So he can just maneuver himself this way, which he's about to do, charge on in. As my Royal Huskarl gets back into this fight, hold, help Holt break the center. Sword is here. As my berserkers come around, and as Joe comes around as well, right through that catapult, right into those eastern archers. 
those hunters. Look at that hunter's draw. People say thro cavalry thrones is weak. Which it is. But a hundred man unit of cav is still going to body a unit of archers. So that archer is literally at half strength now. This unit, I'm pretty sure, started with zero chevrons. It has two silver chevrons right now with 180. Let's see if he gets 180 here. Yeah, he is. 181. He's just pumping that number up. Over here, this center fight's still going in. Hearthguard coming in. My berserkers are in here. My weakened unit of Eastman. We're finally... Finally taking down this elite infantry. The an axe freeman, a long axe with the buff. They're finally dropping, but look at those kills, man. Like, that's, that's literally 466 kills. Over here, Joe pulls away. He is getting chased, so he's gonna... He's got a lot of room to maneuver, so he's just gonna... Retreat. A fun fact, the defenders can always just come all the way around this way up through here where there's no gate but that is just I mean just imagine trying to walk this you literally have to come around all the way here and still get put here so the center fight goes this berserker is getting ready to go but he's got two men left and he's gone berserk he's not running he's not running <laughs> this one's almost a 200 Yeah, right about here. Artillery strikes come in. And Joe sneaking back around. These archers are now out of ammo. So they're preparing their flank. The Adams Vikings in with the buff. And I start to realize, or we start to realize as defenders, that this is a bit untenable. So I'm going to try to break this unit so we can get this guy out. And we're going to do our best to stop them. Joe's hat back to hiding over there. Stop them. Axe Warriors over here. Yeah, those Chosens are dropping real fast. Yeah, that one of my units of Berserkers is gone. This one's down to 19 men. All these archers coming in. I'm getting targeted. So he's coming out. The true flank with these archers. Get some kills in. Just drop some morale. Joe's still biding this time. They're going to replace out. I start to pull back. Thinking, you know what, I can at least get my general out. <laughs> but, yeah. First unit of Huntsmen go down. Ooh, another brutal artillery strike. I go, fuck it, I'm going back in. Hit this unit on the flank. This Joe wins over here. Number wise, we're starting to get the slight advantage, but we're down to. I mean, we have 2,000 men and they have 1940. So we've actually started to surpass them in numbers, which is a really good sign. But I'm done pulling back. All of these guys are going to start pulling back here. My men are going to hold their final stand at the front gates. As I believe at the same time Joe's still hiding over there at the moment. Yeah, all of his men are coming out. I'm pushing in. Get that buff in again. He's moving in. Numbers are dropping hard. I think I still got a berserker over here. Yeah, they do. Eight men left. Everything he's got is moving back. 
As this flank gets overrun by Sundier. As his elites come in. There is no way to hold that corner. So this is a sacrifice. Some armored guards are staying in with me. There goes my general. But as my general falls, Joe's general makes his move. 88 men, 191. Let's see how he does at the end. Because there are some very important units we need to take off this field. That is the Flemish crossbows. Go in here. I actually hit those guys, knock them off. All that's left there is literally two berserkers. <laughs> it's all that's left of that force. So Zero's horsemen have been back up and getting back in with me. Here they go, they're going on in. Flemish crossbows are drop gonna drop now. Goes up to 210 kills, and these Flemish drop. And the biggest threat to what's with what's left goes. Another crossbow here. One routed, it's not fully broken, it can come back. As is that one. Yep, see, that one immediately came back. Pull back 270, then move back in here. As my my last two boys, oh, my last guy. An entire unit has perished. As we watch his end. There he is, he's still fighting. He got a kill! He got another kill! He's still right there. Uh, he's into these guys now. We the enemy. I'm sorry, Joe. This last stand, the final last stand, gets it. He takes down another man. Joe's moving around. He's up to 300 kills. He's gotten 30 more kills, and he's wiped these Flemish off the field. And he continues to charge in. The bow is running away. Funnily enough, I think he actually regains control and <laughs> breaks. It's really sad. He's actually recovering. <laughs> Look how there's still just one guy hiding here. They're blocking off this entrance with the Warlord's companions to make sure Joe doesn't get in. Keep running, Joe's Jen is done. Let's see th what happens to this poor boy. Pretty sure I forgot about him. I think I've got enough to get another bit of another drink. Oh no! I think this is it. He's gone. And there's my final unit. The Axe Warriors drop. These herdmen are taking some shots. Joe's cavalry, after a successful raid, taking out these Flemish crossbows. Are moving back to that side gate and getting into safety. All that's left now is this, is this push down the center. Herdman being hit. Chosen's fighting some Danelaw archers. Navali's coming in. And the attackers have lost their best weapon, the crossbows. Now, don't get me wrong, they still have some elite units. Triple Gold Chevron Hearthguard. Some Norman Huskarls. Some Warlord's Companions could really still turn this tide. They only have a hundred men under us. As we move into the final stage of this battle. Or the next stage of this battle, I should say. Which is them pushing up the choke point. <laughs> Luckily, we got some barricades here. 
provide a safe position for the archers if they do make it all the way up. That will be difficult, but that hearth guard's at 72. Joe's general is a cavalry unit, so they have the advantage on elite infantry. But we have the advantage on position and units. Look how those axe warriors came back. Huntsman versus Huntsman. Or Freeman. I mean, this is going to be a tough fight for them. They're going to just volley down. Daymall's dropping. Hitting the Huskarls, because the Huskarls, to be honest, are the biggest threat in a confined space like that. You get a charge against a small group of men, they're going to drop. The next unit of herdmen are in, and they're getting volleyed on. Yeah, basically what's going to happen is it's going to turn into a fight. What lasts longer, our ranged or their infantry? That's going to what's what what's going to end this fight. Can we do enough damage with our range as they push up? Or are they going to outlast us? But well, we still got two Yams Vikings. And a Galaglass right there. Keep running, you cowards! Dorman's moving their men back to try to stay away. And a unit of Flemish crossbows came back. They only have 22 men left. There's not enough concentrated fire for them to make too much of a difference. Especially because of the way ammunition is made. They don't get any extra ammo for being less units. They have volleys. So that's a fun little tip, by the way. That it's based off volleys. Is how much ammunition you have. Not like It's not like that in Rum 2 where you have a set amount of ammo and they fire. Why, that's why you can fire more with one than with four. Or with 20 men over 160. It doesn't really work that way with the other ones. Crew coming down. Juanina Herman done. 140 kills. As the Hearth Guard gets ready to push. And Northumbria's time to shine is coming soon, too. Just this volley. This center area is so brutal. The issue is, is all the areas to attack this map are brutal. This path, I mean, obviously is a no. It doesn't even go all the way. So that leads to this path right here, which doesn't have any walls to fight, but literally gets you stuck here. Right here in this choke point. With, to be honest, you can't even get the side of all this off of how far it is. And they can just fall into your side the whole time. Over here, I mean, you're just marching the siege towers up this volley. It just becomes brutal. And not much room. Here is your best place to get in initially, but then you face this choke point. And that's why the units like crossbows, catapults are so necessary here. fight continues here. I'm pretty sure that's still the catapult crew. Yeah, catapult crew. Next up is the Gallo Glass. Courage popped. Or no, it's not Encourage. It's the Embolden. Embolden pops and, and Gallo Glass coming in. Despite charging into an another unit so they don't get as many kills, I mean, they got 10 off that charge. Still pretty good for being, literally being held up by the Viking Chosen and their own men. 
And that's against some elites, too. Let's get this fight nice and close. Well, you can see how my Royal Huskarl did. Back to going up here. He's going to be casting Bolden down on here to grab them some benefits. Heavy shot coming in, which heavy shot actually lowers your speed for whatever reason in this uh, game. Fun. So if someone's charging at you, fire volley of heavy shot and then run away. We'll slow them down. Obviously, outside of Duke Moore, we're piercing damage. Look at that. That's the brutal part of this assault. Gallo Glass is coming on back in. Let's go. Party time. Numbers dropping so much because of those Gallo Glass. They were late to counter push in. I love the Gallo Glass. They're a lot of fun, but I mean, it's just basically a Huskarl. And as I said, that's a lot of fun. Galaglass is pulling back as young Vikings get ready to take the place of those Chosens. We're about to fall. Be honest, we have one Yom's Viking left, then some Axes, and some Armored Guards, and some Alaric. I mean, they have 980 men left. We have, we have nearly 1,400. Despite everything, we start running low on numbers. This one's got 18 left at least. He's got two shots left. I think this one also has a few. Eight. Six. He's out. Fourteen there. So we have four archers left with ammo. Some of them not too many. Shots left. And we still have to get through. Another warlord's... Uh, yeah, companions. Another unit of Norman Chosen Warriors. It's Norman Huskarls. Scary, scary stuff to try to break with just hoping that the arrows will break them. The arrows chose them backing out so they don't get volleyed as hard. Because all these units are pretty low. That Hearthguard still has 76 men, man. Ooh, and they've been getting shot the entire time. Gallo glasses are preparing to jump back in. They move in. The Galagas, I guess, will follow in. Buff pops off with Embolden. They're trying to get out of there as fast as they can. The enemy is dead. As 
that tells the enemy general, and they get up to 70. Come on, are they going to get 75? 75, there they go. Nearly 80. Still some dangerous stuff. They are down to 800 men when we're down to 1330. The gap is starting to increase, and it is turning into our favor. The issue is what's left. They have 773 men left. That's 240. That's 240. Two general units. Archer-wise, these two boys are out. 17 shots left. Is that what I was the enemy is routing. Yeah. That one's got 14 shots left. That one's about to run out. Shots wise, two healthy starchers there and there, and he's trying to get into position. Those guys are out, and they're gonna try to hold. Those chosen got two, 257. 130 for those yams. These guys have 394, for those hearth guard. So we gotta hope that they can win. Yeah, Thrones is a lot of fun. It really is. The issue is... I think too many of the maps are way too defender heavy. But that's made up with the coin difference. The More charging in. But look at that isolated guy. It dismounted Jarl's horsemen. That's wild. There you go, they took down an archer. Now they'll charge into the back. Oh, you're gonna face a tougher foe than a dude with a fucking sword. Uh, I was gonna say... They were Yom's Vikings, but I think they just got run over by Gala Glasses. Speaking of Gala Glasses... Pretty sure. If they're at 130 right now. They're getting their damage in. There we go, firing. And I know what Norris's mindset right here was literally like if that Norman Huskarl gets into range, I'm shooting them. They need to die. <laughs> He's testing out the fire shot. Now with the volley. Now it works. Same what fire shot does. Do you remember what it does? I think it's just the morale debuff. Ah, but yeah, as this is clogging up, I do want to say the reason for that spearman unit look at this death. Through oil. Speaking of death, a central fight. You don't know who is who in here. The crazy part is all three generals are still technically alive. Or general units are all still three alive. That one's only lost 30 men. Literally 240. <laughs> or 200. 400 of the 600 men are uh, general units. Or 50 if you want to count this boy. The general stay out for a second to let these guys soak up some damage. Keep running, you cowards! Attack the wolfsmen! 
Even as the Huskars move up, they'll be targeted now. See, they flee before our might. He's trying to get those Yams Vikings back. And those Galaglass back. Ammo-wise, he doesn't have much left, and he's not going to win that fight in the center if he uh, runs out of ammo. and we're not going to be able to hold this corridor, to be honest. Or they decide to put up a three-man formation so they can be able to flank and shoot units in the back. A bit of a pull-through, but let's see what they had. 17, 17... I mean, there was nothing there, to be honest. These units, armored archers coming in to protect Hearthguard, the Yob's Vikings, and the Galaglass. Shot in the back, consistently. That's what these guys need to do. To be honest, it's our best chance of winning, because at Huskarl, hitting any of these units are going to just rip through them, especially if they're a healthy unit. So you have to hope to make them not healthy before they charge in. No, well, I'm already dead, so I don't have to buy any drinks. And I've finished off my meat, so I definitely don't need any more drinks. Those boys gone. Fire's still coming in. Viking with armor guard, guard in front of it. Lost Carl's in the airing war bands. Well, my guy stops the charge, but I mean, or Joe's guy does, but that's still. Ooh. This is actually Norris's. So I'm just going to call everyone. There goes the Norris's general. Galaglass is going to do the same to this this general unit. Decimate them and open up this gap so we can get through, so they can get through and do some damage. Yep. Armored guards and cavalry trying to break on through. Now it's going to be time to rotate around and end it. There are 251 men left with 157, 48. That done, the air can get into this unit of Normans. Or, yep, here they go, they're going in. There it goes. Fun fact, last unit left is a Nor unit of Norman Chosen Swords. We have a minute left to play. Everything coming in on them. And you know what? This unit of Viking Chosen Warriors survived with one man. 259 kills. Let's see if I can see him. There's that last man standing. Let's move into the battle replay skin. Or this... Basically, the story, scoring stream. Stream. Ah, oh, gosh, my words. First up, we have the Norse with the Norris. Four forty-three on his general. 
145 here. This Yams. Only two for. Th Those are number of men. 145 and 272 with uh, his Yams Vikings. His long axes. I mean, the best one. One of them getting 102. Nice. <laughs> Literally killed to the last man. Top of that, we've got Berserkers. 259, 180. Or no, these are the Chosens. I did not know my Britannia units as well as I thought. 259 and 186. I'm the only one who brought some Berserkers. Armored Archers, 100, 136, and 90 for that trebuchet. Catapults, God damn it! <laughs> this is the me talking now. Joe. And uh, Norris is playing the Norris, getting 2,800... 2,082 kills. Joe getting 1,976. 305 with his general. Oh man, which one is this? The Spear Warrior is getting 169. That's crazy. Our rig not doing much. But Armored Guards 323. 173, 112 for Axeman. 208, 208 for Catalog Glass. And 107, 102 for Trained Archers. And 166 for that Catapult. And the final defender, Knifeland, with Charlie Six Ulu, 2,236 kills. Man, I just said my name like it wasn't me. The Royal Harsh Carl, 384. Highest long, a long axis, 79. Those guys did their best to hold eight kills. <laughs> the Eastman Axe Warriors, 211 is the highest, but we also have a 138 and a 127. The Berserkers, 241 and 286. See? Berserkers look like that, and then these guys have the same portrait. It's so annoying. 141 for the Easterman Hunters, 135 for the Eastman Hunters. Then we have Smart Hawk playing as Sundrier, getting 1746 in kills. 192 for his general, which is a unit, I believe he's got the unit of Hearthguard. Some Eastern Eastman champions. Uh, 131 for that boy. 117 for this one. 285, 184. Uh, also, Eastman champions. With the Hessier, 108. One, and then Herdman, 140, 101. Yeah. Don't think the long axes didn't much, or they're great axes. But we got four units of archers. I don't know how long I signed for. That's going to get cut out if it was too long. <laughs> four units of archers, and then 112 on that catapult. Northumbria with Dade, 2330. 1937 kills. 146 on this general. 198 on those herdmen. 118 on those Hasir. 70, 175 on those Chosen Swordsmen, with another 175 on another Chosen Swordsman. Heavy Axemen, 143, 115, 100, and then Archers, 108, 118. That can include this dead guy, too. We are a Swordsman. 97 kills. And finally... Riza four six nine one one playing as the Normans. Max being deployed is two thousand two oh man, two thousand five hundred and eighty, that's so many men. Uh but uh Normans bringing one sixty three with their Norman Huskarls. One sixty eight with I forget their names. Yeah, the Chosen Warriors, 102 with these Chosen Warriors, 164 with these Chosen Warriors. These are all Chosen Warriors, are they not? Yeah. 289, 127. And the Norman Elite Infantry, 466. Those crossbows got eliminated by both Archer Fire and the Cavalry General. 
that is it from me today. I hope you all enjoy. Charlie Sixulu signing off.